This video is sponsored by Brilliant. In the small hours of February 3rd, 1905, the body of Peter Eberhardt was discovered frozen to death in a ditch just outside St. Paul, Minnesota. His body was found wildly contorted by his former boss, Claude Argenvale, who took it upon himself to haul it back to his home, where they endeavored to give Eberhardt a proper and respectful burial. They placed his body in a shed on the side of the property next to a stove with a roaring fire to slowly defrost the corpse. But before anyone could make an attempt to embalm him, the shed exploded in a fiery burst of light, leaving nothing left of Peter save for one button, a boot heel, and a small piece of a watch chain. On the night of February 2nd, 1905, local town marshal approached farm worker Peter Eberhardt with a bottle of nitroglycerin he confiscated from a would-be bank robber while the two were drinking at a local tavern. Eberhardt, fulfilling his destiny of drinking himself into a stupor, bet that he could drink the entire bottle without experiencing any adverse effects. Peter drank the entire bottle of the substance and started on his way back home. He never made it back and either from the drinking, the nitroglycerin, or the glacial cold of a Minnesota winter, he froze to death off the side of the road. If you wanted to build a railway before nitroglycerin, you would have to manually light black powder, an older form of gunpowder, as mining charges. But you ran the risk of blowing yourself up, Nitroglycerin, shortened to NTG, is a substance invented in 1847 by Italian chemist Ascanio Sobrero. It was vastly more powerful than gunpowder, but also immensely unstable. An early explosion of nitroglycerin in San Francisco leveled an entire building and killed 15 people. A 300-pound crate of the substance was shipped into the city, leaking nitroglycerin. When a worker brought a hammer to open the crate, it exploded leveling the building. Liquid nitroglycerin is so unstable that even a gentle knock can trigger a chain reaction. This happens very quickly, and a lot of energy is released in the process. It's also the reason why the Nobel Prize exists. The Nobel Prize is named after Alfred Nobel, who invented a method of stabilizing NTG for practical use. While in Germany investigating an accident at one of his factories, he realized that if the liquid was absorbed into something, it could become easier to handle. He found a naturally occurring substance called Kieselger, which is a kind of diatomaceous earth in the German moorlands, which he could combine with NTG to make an explosive paste that we call dynamite. Where a small bump could set off a chain reaction in NTG, dynamite won't go off, even if you light it on fire. It requires a blasting cap, aka a smaller explosive to trigger detonation. It's even safer than substances like gasoline or propane. Making nitroglycerin safer was pretty much everyone's main priority. But while attempting to do just that, researchers discovered that workers in late 19th century dynamite factories who had been suffering from chest pains suddenly found themselves with some relief whenever they clocked in for work. Nitroglycerin capsules, sprays, ointments, and patches are used to treat a condition called angina, a common side effect of some kinds of coronary heart disease. Chest pain can happen when your heart isn't receiving enough blood, usually due to narrow blood vessels. When consumed, the body converts NTG into a compound called nitric oxide, which widens arteries and blood vessels, reducing chest pain. So, how did they make an explosive boom into a medical Medical boon. Manufacturers dilute the NTG with a 0.9% sodium chloride solution or 5% glucose solution to neutralize its explosive properties. Most medications are diluted like this, primarily in order to make doses of active ingredients as small and effective as possible. So, what happened to Peter? Nitroglycerin is a vasodilator, which opens up blood vessels. 
Peter Eberhardt likely got very red in the face, or faint. His heart rate probably increased, and he would have felt nauseated too. But if you remember, nitroglycerin wasn't the only thing Eberhardt drank that night. It's outright dangerous to take any medication with alcohol. All of his symptoms would only get worse. The side effects included tachycardia, rapid heart rate, sudden and drastic changes in blood pressure, dizziness, and fainting. It's hard to say what happened inside his body, but I can say that it was not good. Most likely, he passed out along the way home, and then froze to death. But this is where it gets a little complicated, and a lot more explosive. An explosion is just rapid combustion. The difference between a fire and an explosion is time. Fire, aka combustion, requires three components, fuel, oxygen, and heat. A lighter, for example, has fuel in the form of butane, oxygen from the air, and heat from the spark generated between flint and steel. What makes nitroglycerin so volatile is that its molecular structure already includes both a fuel source and oxygen. It's made up of three nitrate groups attached to a chain of hydrocarbons. The nitrate groups contain a bunch of oxygen. The hydrocarbons are a common ingredient in all fossil fuels. So, if my math is correct, that's two out of three steps. When nitroglycerin decomposes, it releases a lot of heat. And according to the first law of thermodynamics, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only changed from one form to another. There's more energy in a nitroglycerin molecule than there is in the molecules of what it breaks down into. So, when the bonds between nitroglycerin break down, the extra energy is vented into the air as heat. So there we have all three ingredients for fire, all in one place, breaking down in a matter of nanoseconds just from a simple jolt. Remember, the difference between fire and an explosion is time. It's honestly a miracle that Peter didn't explode while drinking from the bottle in the first place. But moving him was also dangerous. The freezing point of nitroglycerin is unusually high, at 13 degrees Celsius. Frozen NTG is a little less reactive than liquid NTG. So, in the time before dynamite, it was commonly shipped frozen inside large square cans that could weigh up to 50 pounds each. That isn't to say that the frozen form isn't explosive, it absolutely is. There are tons of stories of miners attempting to unfreeze chunks of solid NTG in the field and straight up burying themselves under mountains because they did it ever so slightly wrong. This story is over a hundred years old, so obviously we can't know exactly what happened that night. But we can make some educated guesses. News articles about Peter's fate mention that he was drinking with the town marshal, and if any of you have had a sip of Devil's Firewater, you know that he was probably feeling overconfident. The town marshal, like a frat boy at a house party, showed off the explosive, and Peter, like another frat boy at a house party, accepted a challenge that no one wanted or asked him to do. Now, by the grace of whatever god he believed in, he didn't explode. But since nitroglycerin, and all medications, react badly with alcohol, his body was not having it. You know, look, I don't know about you, but if I'm gonna be sick, I'd like to be sick at home. Which is exactly where Peter tried to go before he passed out and froze to death along the way. Later, after they found his body, they carried it to the home of his employer, Claude Argenvale, and laid it out in a shed for embalming. Little did they know, he was literally a human bomb popsicle that could blow them to kingdom come at the drop of a hat. As the frozen nitroglycerin in his guts started to melt, either from heating up too quickly or from some natural jolt during the thawing process, he exploded, taking the entire shed with him. One way or another, there was nothing left of Peter Eberhardt to bury. The discovery that nitroglycerin could be stabilized was obviously one of the most dynamite scientific breakthroughs of all time. But to make breakthroughs like that, or even to solve problems in our daily lives, we need to know how to think like a scientist. That's why I love Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning website that offers a massive range of courses on science, problem solving, and even calculus and special relativity. With over 60 courses, Brilliant takes complex and fascinating subjects and turns them into fun interactive lessons that aren't only educational, but also just plain fun. 
I thought Brilliant's scientific thinking course would be a breeze, but as it turns out, going into a problem thinking you already have the solution is the first thing they tell you not to do. I'm having a blast learning about structural engineering, optics, even fluid dynamics. Brilliant gives you fun challenges and puzzles that help you develop a framework to tackle anything life throws at you and improve your critical thinking skills. Go to brilliant.org brew to sign up for free. And also, the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership.